Hello and welcome to Sports This Morning. I'm Cecilia Omog. We're coming up on the program this morning. We start with Aimba in the CAF Confederations Cup. They will be in action this weekend, March Day 3 in the CAF Confederations Cup. And for Aimba, they will be facing AS City of Tunisia at home. They want to bounce back from what happened in the last game in Soweto against Orlando Pirates. And judging from the fact that they were able to get a win against Dakada, they will also be buoyant knowing that they can get a win at home. Also on the program, yes, a tennis. Uh, well, Stefanos Sissipas is out of the Miami Open and someone made sure of that, talking about Hubert Hackers was the one who defeated him in three sets. He was leading by a set and, of course, two games up. But somehow, he just couldn't. He boggled that and he lost his out of Miami Open. And, of course, we'll talk about the NBA. We'll be waiting for the debut of Victor Oladipo. And of course, Victor Oladipo finally made his debut for the Miami Heat. And it was a good one for him simply because where the Heat were able to ensure that it was a memorable one for him. They won that game out last in the Golden State Warriors 116-109. Okay, that's for the headlines. Now let's talk about all the things I just mentioned, starting with, of course, the NBA. Uh, if you can get the results coming from last night and early hours of this morning, just seven games were played. Those seven games were two uh, players actually well, decided to light up the night, but despite lighting up the night, the teams were not on the winning side. They were on the losing side. I'm talking about Russell Westbrook and, of course, Steph Curry. But both sides, their team lost. Of course, the Warriors losing to the Heat. And for Russell Westbrook, you keep wondering, another triple-double on the night. But that just wasn't enough. Okay, if you can see the result coming from the NBA, I'll just read through, read through what we have here. Philadelphia 76ers and Cleveland Cavaliers, it was, seven, it was 114 and 94. And the game between Detroit Pistons and Washington Wizards, 120 and 94. And those we have Russell Westbrook having uh, a triple double, but not enough for the team. For the Brooklyn Nets and Charlotte Hornets, now the Brooklyn Nets played without James Harden. Of course, Kevin Durant is still injured, but you have uh, Lamarcus Aldridge actually making his debut, and Kyrie Irving, and both sides were able to help this team to that victory. 111 and 84 over the Charlotte Hornets was still with Alonzo Ball because he's uh, Lamelo Ball because he's injured. Orlando Magic and New Orleans Pelicans 115, 110, and Miami Heat, of course, Golden State Warriors. That's the focus later. 116, 109, and Atlanta Hawks and San Antonio Spurs was 134 and 129. The Mandy Rose, of course, was on fire, but it wasn't enough for them to get a victory. Devin Nuggets and the Los Angeles Clippers. 111 and 94. You ask yourself what happened to the Clippers. But then, okay, there you have the result I just talked about earlier. Just confirmation of all the results. For the Clippers, I mean, they suffered their second straight defeat going down to the Devon Nuggets. Well, Jamal Murray uh, was impressive with 23 points and 8 rebounds on the night. And of course, Nikola Jokic scored 14 points along with 7 rebounds and 7 assists. Devon Nuggets were able to just clip the wings of the Clippers. And they're trying to play a catch-up now, 2031. Okay, let's leave it and talk about the game of the night. Yes, we're choosing that game because of Victor Ladik. But we've been waiting for him to make his debut. And finally, he did that. It was a memorable one for him because Jimmy Butler scored 22 points in that game. Doc and Robinson scored 21. And of course, the Heat had to hold off the Golden State Warriors 116 and 109. But then, now that's the straight uh, victory they're getting Three in a row now for them. Tyler Hero was another player who scored 20 points on, on the night. Bama Debayo, 19. Trevor Ariza added 10. Andre Godala, of course, the 2015 NBA Finals MVP for the Golden State Warriors. He had 10 in the fourth quarter. That was what actually helped them to seal that victory. Steph Curry, as I mentioned earlier, 36 points, 11 rebounds for the Warriors, but then it wasn't enough. They got 23 from Andre Wiggins and, of course, uh, 16 points, 10 rebounds, and 8 assists from Draymond Green. It wasn't their ninth. For Draymond Green, the 16 points he had actually matched his season high he had before. And of course, level rebounds was actually high for uh, Stephen Curry for this season. But that just wasn't enough. Victor Ladik, as I mentioned earlier, who made his debut, he was restricted to just six points, five assists, three rebounds, and two steals. Because all the time, I think there was just a foul that was being called almost all the time. And at the end of the game, he wasn't really happy about that. But he was happy that, yes, the team are doing something special. And he believes that they can really go all the way, maybe to the playoffs.
Yeah, I mean, it, it speaks for itself. Um, even before I got here, you know, um, the way the box score is, they've had similar games just like that. So um, it just shows what kind of you know character men we have, what kind of players we have um, on this roster. Um, and I'm definitely glad to be a part of it. Um, you know, as I continue to get adjusted with everything, um, I think we could do something very, very special. Yeah, it was tough. You know, I felt like a couple of the whistles, you know, were, you know, could have gone either way. But, you know, it is what it is. It's a part of the game. Um, and unfortunately, you know, it was kind of tough, you know, having to sit down and then um, not being able to really find a rhythm. But, you no, know, it's just the first game. You know, things like that happen. You know, at the end of the day, I'm just glad we won um, and we got the win. And that's really what matters. So, um, you know, like I said, everything else will click as I continue to keep playing, uh, continue to keep being acclimated. I'm just got to take it one day at a time. Absolutely. Well, hope we can do lots of things. This is actually the first time Vito Ladikba is making a debut with his team and he's not on a double-double. He needs to get used to the team and with time, he will definitely want to have that. Okay, let's talk about Stephen Curry. He had a good night, but wasn't a good night for his team. I mean, we're trying to sometimes be a little too aggressive, which I don't think we mind at all. I don't mind, but got to know time to score. Got to know how the flow of the game is. Um, I think early it was kind of just a lack of chemistry in terms of five guys being on the string and being connected. And that's to be expected with, you know, a new group of guys. But, um, you know, some of them, we just got to be smarter. I, there's not really a, a reason or an excuse. It's just you got to be smarter. Um, you know, jumping on pump fakes, me getting caught up at half court with five seconds left in the second quarter. Um, the early fouls in quarters that then change the way you can be aggressive throughout the quarter because you know you're getting closer and closer to being in the penalty. So um, overall, there's not really a consistent pattern it's just bad fouling and you gotta you gotta fix it all right that's the first step curry let's just take a look at first step performance you know you already know them i think the man the reason yes he had a good one for the suns in the tunis spurs but then he was on the losing side they lost 134 129 to the atlanta hawks 36 5 and 9 and russell westbrook another triple double but just not enough because his team just couldn't get a win Bad nights for him. And of course, Steph Curry, yes, he had the best on the night, 36 11, which was a season high for him in terms of rebounds. But then it wasn't enough. Now, Steph Curry had 36 11 and three assists, just not enough. All right, that's it for the NBA. Now it's time to talk about athletics. Now we'll be talking about the making of Champions Grand Prix Olympic qualifying event. And we have some athletes who were actually outstanding, especially the one who finally. I won the 200 meter size. We've been trying, but third time lucky, he got to have it. And of course, we also have uh, Emmanuel Ojeli. He's in the studio. Jerry Jack is in the studio. Emmanuel Ojeli is also in the studio. And these guys are preparing for the National Sport Festival, just sweating it out at the MOC Grand Prix. And right now, they're here in the studio trying to see how they can also make a mark at the National Sport Festival. Okay, I'll start with you, Jerry. It's good to have you back in the studio. Thank you very much, <laughs> Celia. And of course, Emmanuel, thank you for thank coming. You, thank you for having us. So let's start with what happened on Monday, on Tuesday and Wednesday. I mean, we, we've been waiting for you to get that uh, 200 meter title, so to speak. <laughs> and you finally got it. What was it like for you? Yeah, for me, uh, it's like it's been a long time coming. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think Yaba has not really been my lucky ground <laughs> up till the moment, but. Uh, I enjoyed competing, uh, wanted more, but um, I'm glad with the title, I'm glad with where I got. Yeah, you should be glad with that. Uh, of course, Emmanuel, 400 meters, three times in a row, and I'm like, okay, is it more like, uh, how do I put it now? Like, is, um, how, how, which, I'm trying to look for a word to use. He said uh, Yaba is actually not his lucky ground. It happens to be your own lucky ground, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I would say, yeah, he's my lucky ground. So why did you say that? Is it, well, what are um, the things you usually do differently and all that? What, what, what's about that ground that any time we are having that event? We know this year is special because the Olympic qualifying event, the last two wasn't like that, but this year is special. But the last two you've won, and this year, of course, there's more motivation for you to want to win it because everyone wants to qualify for the Olympics. Yeah, before, before the, um, the competition, my coach told me that 
Yaba is a very good track that if I should keep my head down, I'm going to run fast race there because it's a very good track. So I just take the mindset that once I go there, it's no it's no matter of winning, 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 it's to just put the uh, put down the time there or qualify for the Olympics. That is just the mindset. So what what's the what's the stage now for Olympic qualification? Um, <laughs> I'll say let's see how the festival goes. We'll go. That's where yeah. you're planning to nick that up. Now, let yeah. me come to you, uh, Jerry. Yeah. The sport festival is starting. I mean, athletes have started going to camp. When are you going to camp? Like Monday or Tuesday? Uh, <laughs> we're representing Lagos State. Lagos so, State. So, so Lagos State. When, by when? To, to, tomorrow, tomorrow Monday. Okay, we'll Lagos should be yeah. out from here. Yeah. Okay, that's a good one. Now, what will your plans be? Because I know in Abuja, you finished fourth in the 100 meters. Yeah. And of course, I mean, you've won silver in the 200 meters before, but having won from the, from the MOC Grand Prix, yeah. Olympic qualifying event, mm -hmm. and of course, you'll be looking forward to something better uh, for Team Lagos at the National Sports Festival. Yeah, obviously, I'm going there to, to put on a good show, to get closer to the Olympic qualifying, both the 100 and the 200. Uh, I took uh, the, MO, the third uh, MOC Beijing Grand Prix as a, a training ground mm -hmm. for the festival, because I know I'll be running lots of rounds in the festival. That's why I did the 400 and the 200 at the Bed King MOC Grand Prix. So I'm going to the festival now for my specialties, the 100 and the 200, and I'm going there to get as close to the Olympic qualifying as possible. Hmm. I, I, lo I, love, I love that because uh, ov obviously all eyes will be on you, knowing what you did in Yaba. I mean, the, the competition will be very fierce. And we know that we're having athletes from Delta State. And we know how Delta usually dominates yeah. National Sport Festival. You were in sure. Abuja last night. Yeah. You saw yeah. how it was. But we're not yeah. going to, I mean, Delta has already told us that they won't be having a full complement of their international stars because, of course, this was a prayer for a sport festival yeah. for the Olympics. Yeah. And knowing that, they may not be able to come, yeah. pandemic and all that and everything. So for you, will it be a level playing field, knowing that those international stars, Devon Duduru and the likes, would not be around? I, I think I still have to compete against them <laughs> in, the, in the national trials. Yeah, which is different. We're focusing on sports festival right yeah. now. Yeah, but, your chances. But the festival, I, I think, is just about going there to execute. I'm, I'm not worried about who is there or who is not there. I just want to run as close to the Olympic qualifying as possible so that I give myself enough motivation for the rest of the year leading into competing in Europe and competing with those guys you just mentioned. Mm, interesting. I think I'm going to like that. Okay, let me come to you, uh, Emmanuel. Yes, national champion, 400 meters. I mean, three times consecutively at the MOC Grand Prix. Uh, for you, National Sport Festival, all eyes definitely on you right now. <laughs> definitely. Um, for me, I'll just, I'll just say that everybody should put their mind, their mind down that um, the National Sport Festival is... We, um, we're going to see the Olympics qualifi uh, qualifying there by grace of God. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Okay. By the grace of God, I like that. What are the extra things you will need to do? I mean, what's your coach telling you? What, what are the things you will need to do to get that qualification? Mm, for me to just stay focused. For me to just stay focused and um, execute well. You know, 400 meter, once, once you start well, um, you need to finish well yeah. as well. So, um, yeah, everything is, everything is in place. In yeah. place for you to yeah, excel. For me to, yeah. Sure. I get that. So what was different in this year's competition? Talking about, let's talk about the MOC Grand Prix now. What was different in this year for you, Jerry? Yeah, this year was like, it was, was more, there was more motivation, I, I would say. There was more motivation, seeing that it's an Olympic year. So, uh, and the times uh, from the 100 meters were superb. I almost, uh, I almost felt bad that I didn't run the 100. But I, I took it as, I took it with, uh, with a, uh, as a good motivation uh, going into the 200 and I, just went there to execute. Uh, I talked to my coach and we, we gracefully accepted the fact that we want to go to the festival and hit our mark. So this year, it was more motivation because it was the Olympic year. And then there was Bet King who did, like, f they did fabulous for us, uh, for the organization, for helping uh, athletes uh, to be able to compete at such a high level here in Lagos. And, uh, helping MOC to organize such a great event. So I just want to say thanks to Beth King. 
Okay, uh, interesting. I mean, talking about I mean, all the things that went down and everything and all that, we understand that uh, you wanted to do, you didn't want to do the 100 meters. At the sport festival, you're going to have the 100 meters on Tony, right? Yeah. Okay, but qualification for Olympics will be low in that one. Maybe, of course, will be on 200 meters or the two. I'll be running the two. The two. Well. So, yeah, okay, to yeah. get qualification for the Olympics. Well, that would be interesting. Olympics. And for you, Manu, you'll be focusing basically on 400, 400 meters, yeah. no, nothing no, else. No, right? no, so what was different for you in this race, apart from it being Olympic qualifying event? Um, we're running with my with my um, with my open heads. Um, I would say that it would be a very very um, good one for us. So from there, they're going to pick um, um, our elite team uh, four by four. Um, I know uh, this year, once we go out there, we're going to um, achieve a lot. From we are going to most it's really four by four. Um, I'm I'm just saying that they should. Um, that she wash out to okay. uh, the men's for 400 meters. Okay, I'm, I'm liking that four by 400 meters. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I know four by 100 meters. Yes, I can guarantee. Just maybe sometimes Nigeria gets so. Well, four by 400 meters for men. Yes. Um. We have um Sikiru Ademi okay. who ran 45 uh, seconds early this season, early this year. Um. We also have a Chidio Kezie. We mm. have um. um and um, Morupe, okay. uh, um, uh, Nathaniel yeah. Samson is there, me, myself, I'm also there. So if, we, if, they, if, they, is, if they organize um, the relating very well, I know that definitely come out. Uh, come out uh, talks in that one. Yeah, sure. So that means that the national trials, it now depends on what the AFN can do to have a proper national trials, whereby yeah. the 4 by 400 meters relay team, you know, can be better and get the Olympic qualification. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Four by hundred meters, Four right? 100. So that's another one everyone yeah. will be looking forward to because we know really uh, we saw. I mean, yes, the MOC athletes won the four by hundred meters yeah. and all that, <laughs> but but that's different because it's just you guys. Yeah. But this time around, you're going to be having athletes yeah. from track and field athletes from different states, yeah. national yeah. and of course so international athletes yeah. coming yeah. to join together. How will the blend be? Because we know usually camping for Olympic Olympics usually like three weeks, four weeks. The time is usually not there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think this year is going to be much, much more different mm -hmm. uh, because, like, if you watch the time, we as a track club reported yesterday, it, it shows some signs of encouragement for a club to be able to run so close to 39 seconds. It's, it shows yeah. what a nation, a nation can, can definitely do if we are um, properly put together. So I think this year is going to be much different. Everybody's running into shape fights. Well, a lot of, uh, at the right time, you can see Favo Ashen, who is part yeah. of us, who is not present here, who did the 10-1, mm -hmm. seven seconds. There's Enoch, uh, who is a 10-0, 10-1 runner. There's Divine, there's um, uh, Raymond, there's Raymond, yeah. Shakiri, there's also myself. So we have a lot of us guys in the 100 meters who are raring to go whenever we're called upon. And once the team is properly assembled, I know we can do something. Really, really great for this nation and the Olympics and the 4x1. Yeah. yeah, from all indication, it's now in the hands of AFN right now Definitely. to do the right thing. Yeah. Because yeah. you guys obviously are fired up and you're ready to go yes. for the sports festival and also at the Olympics. Yeah. But this sports festival, finally, if I let you guys leave the studio, what will be your target? 100, 200 meters. I mean, medal, gold, silver, what are you giving to Lagos <laughs> State? For me, I... I, I would say the 200 meters, I'm going for gold. Mm -hmm. 100 meters, I'm going <laughs> purely to get look, uh, to lower my time and get close to the Olympics. To the Olympics qualification. qualification. Okay, yes. nice one. Emmanuel. <laughs> uh, as for me, I'm going for the gold. Gold uh, for yeah, that. For, yes, for okay, the all the best to you guys and also to Team Lagos. See Thank if Lagos you. can actually conquer everyone at, at the Sport Festival in Benin. Thank, Thank you very Thank much you. for having us yes. again. All right. Okay, we need to go on a short break. We'll be back after this. We're still talking tennis, Miami Open, right? And of course, Yemi Oluz will be joining me to have a comprehensive review of the sport festival. Now, we'll just take a breather a little bit because I have another guest in the studio, Yemi Oluz. She's right here. But before that, you guys can talk to us on our Twitter handle. Yes, the international break is over and all the leagues across the globe would we'll definitely be back. Yes, Nigerian League has been on. There was no break for Nigerian League, but leagues across Europe are on break because of the international break. Now, EPL is resuming. Arsenal, Liverpool, they're in action. The cracker, you will say Leicester and Manchester City in action. So tell us what you think. And of course, the story everywhere that Haaland, well, he's leaving 
uh, Borussia Dortmund. He may just leave Borussia Dortmund at the end of this season. And Barcelona and Real Madrid forefront because his agent was seen in Barcelona. To see if that's the club he'll be joining. So tell us, what club do you want Haaland to join? And of course, for Sergio Aguero, where will he be going to? He's free at the end of the season. Should he go to Arsenal, Chelsea, Manchester United, or maybe Barcelona? Because that's what everyone is thinking. Also, the National Sport Festival finally is going to be holding uh, athletes uh, returning, uh, resuming camp today. And of course, why the main event is starting on Tuesday, the opening ceremony is going to be on Tuesday. Tell us which team you think will win. Is it Team Lagos, Team Delta, or Team, team Edo? Well, we know that most of these uh, states will not have the full complement of the international stars. They will just have to deal with the ones that are here. So the best will definitely win this one. Tell us about that. And Amber will also be in action in the CAF Confederations Cup. So tell us also about that one. EPL, NPFL will also be uh, games will be played in Nigeria Professional Football League. We'll also be talking about that. Now, Yemi Olus joined me in the studio. Sport Festival, yes. That's the big one right now. Yemi, good morning. It's good to have you. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Cecilia. It's been a while yeah. since I've been here. Yeah, except on Skype yesterday. We couldn't finish our discussions. So yeah, we have due to, to bad network. Today. I apologize for that. <laughs> it's okay. It's Nigeria. We'll get that. It's the times, right? Yeah, I know. Let's talk about the sport festival now. I mean, postponement. We're waiting for it. You know, we know pandemic happened last year. And then we land December, then January. But you know, it is April. Finally now, we know it's happening. I know, Cecilia. Like, it's been a long wait, right? Yeah. It suffered, like, five postponements <laughs> or thereabouts from March to December to January to February to March. And now we're finally in April. Yeah, and, you know, we're glad it's finally, hope, um, it's finally happening. And I'm really happy for these athletes because they've worked so hard yeah. since last year. You know, this was something that they were looking forward to. Because the festival is like our mini Olympics here in yeah. Nigeria, you know, all sport, multi-sport and everything. So everyone is working towards that, looking towards performing at the festival because also it's an Olympic year. So there's a lot at stake. People feel like, okay, because they didn't have many competitions last year due to the pandemic, this is the competition everybody has been waiting for. You know, people want to meet qualification marks and all of that. So I'm glad it's finally happening for the athletes. You know, the mental stress, everything yeah. they've had to undergo. You start training, you stop because it's been postponed. Then you continue, then you stop. It's a lot, you know, for an athlete. Even we as journalists, I mean, it's quite tasking for us not to talk of the athletes themselves. So I'm relieved it's finally happening. Mm, I'm relieved too. Okay, there are so many states that are preparing. For instance, we have uh, the state from the Northwest. They are preparing for it. Let's just take a look at this report, how these uh, states are actually getting ready to be at the festival. <laughs> The Gigenia Memorial Stadium in Sokoto accommodates different training sections for the state athletes. Camping exercise for the National Sports Festival has been completed and the state is confident of winning medals in the 12 sports it's featuring in. So far we have registered over 12 associations which include judo. We are going to take part in judo. We are going to take part in table tennis, weightlifting, but the, uh, the, 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 the disabled and the father. Uh, we are also going to take part in uh, uh, wrestling, chess, you know, badminton, and uh, athletics. Kaduna State is going to the competition with 256 athletes in 25 sports. The government says it's excited about participating in the Games as it hopes to win the right to host the next edition of the festival. Uh, we desire to take a lot of our young boys and girls to be in uh, for the purpose of competition and for exposure. We like them to begin to feel how the national stage looks like uh, so that they can become greater athletes and players uh, in the near future. We as a government and our people are all happy you know, to go to Benin and uh, hopefully uh, we will win the hostel right and then again we will aggregate Nigeria and you know, sports loving fans across the continent and the world over in Kaduna uh, in 2022 so that we can showcase uh, you know, the enormous investment that we have made in the area of sporting infrastructure uh, as well as general uh, infrastructural development uh, that is going on in the states. <laughs> 
Kano State government announces it's taken a large contingent of 204 athletes to the competition because it has provided funds for the athletes to step up their position on the overall medal table. Yes, it's, it's a huge number taking into account the financial uh, uh, commitment in taking this number to Benin. But all the same, the state government has done so well by providing us with the logistics. And this is why the number is so large because we are also carrying the burden of representing Northwest Zone in five team events because we emerged as champions in basketball, male and female, handball, volleyball and rugby. Athletes in the Northwest region are confident the Games will draw the attention of the various governments to sports development in their states. Yeah, that's what it's all about, sports development in these states, especially regards to facilities and also the fact that these athletes who compete, you have to monitor them, reward them and just ensure that they are better citizens in the country. Now, uh, Yemi, we heard, I mean, Sokoto, Kaduna, Akano, the Northwest states, they're already, I mean, of all the states, I mean, we know Kano and Kaduna, they're really, they're excited when it comes to sports. Kaduna, when they hosted the marathon, where you were there, we were all surprised and all that. We saw some of the facilities and all. The Kaduna games that were hosted the last time, yeah, uh, 2009. Nine and yeah, all. National okay. Sports Festival. First of all, yes, that and, and I remember. And to again. Yeah, I remember in 2009, you know, yeah. Kaduna really, the state government put in a lot of work. I remember the facilities at the Murtala Mohammed Square. Like it could contain as many events as possible. They had a beautiful swimming pool, hockey pitches, basketball courts, volleyball, handball, whatever you were looking for, you know, Dambe and so many other things, you know. Like that facility was put in place for the 2009 festival. Yeah. So if Kaduna wants to host again, you know, in 2020, I, I believe some of those facilities need to undergo, like, you know, they need to revamp them and all of, but it would be great if Kaduna can host, but they just need to put all of those things, you know, in place. It was, it was beautiful, 2009. Yeah, you know? Kadat, it was my first Kadat, national yeah. sports festival Kadat, as, like as a journalist. And yeah, it was exciting. So, so I believe they can do it again, you know, just need to put the right things in place. So it simply means those facilities were just left. I mean, they were not maintained and all that. Maybe we use it regularly maintainers to ensure that anytime they want to host, they know that those things are already. I, I think it's it's a Nigerian problem. Okay. You know, this issue we have with maintenance of facilities. You see a beautiful facility. Everyone yeah. is gushing. Oh my God, this is world class, you know, world standard. Every, then put in the work to at least maintain that place so that we don't have to keep creating, you know, or recreating some of these yeah. facilities. It's, it's a lot of money. You know, because I know a lot of money was spent on that place. So it's not good that we leave our facilities, you know, to just go to waste like that. We really need to adopt that healthy maintenance culture as, as a country. Okay, we need to adopt that. You're from Kaduna. Yes, Kaduna State said we are ready from the commission, from the words of the commission. Yeah, partially from Kaduna. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a soft spot today. Kaduna Definitely, athletes, from yes. what we've seen in the marathon and some other competitions they hosted recently, do they have a chance at all? Ah, uh, well, like, are you talking in terms of medal standings at the festival? Medal standings <laughs> and also maybe the athletes. Which, which of these sports you think the Kaduna athletes might just, you know, maybe be at par with others from the South-South? Mm, I think mm. it will take um, quite a lot of work because, okay. you know, it has to do with the festival that we yeah. look at Delta State, yeah. Edo State, mm. River State. You know, uh, some of this. I, I think FCT, you know, does well. So I think they finished seventh, mm -hmm. you know, on you know. the medals, medals table at the last festival, yeah. you know. So I, I think it will take Kaduna, like, some time to get to that level. But I know they are really interested in sports and trying to do as much as they can, you know, in terms of improving the standard of sports in Kaduna. You know, they hosted the marathon back yeah. in November, which was a great step, you know, towards doing that. So it's just, you know, more effort. Things, can, effort. things can always be better, you know. Can always be better. Okay. See, things can always be better for them. Now, you, I mean, you guys are the organizers. Yes, you're a journalist and all that. You guys are the organizers of the Making of Champions, you know, uh, Grand Prix and all that. The third edition happened this year. We were actually talking about it, you know, yesterday before, of course, the internet happened. Yeah. You know, we couldn't finish the discussion. You've seen some of these athletes. I mean, we had like four athletes qualifying for the Olympics from this event. 
there, no, were, there were two. Two, okay. Two qualified for the Olympics and then um, more athletes qualified for the world on the okay, 20. Okay, on the 20. On the 20 championships, okay. yes. So that that's, so we had like four. Yeah, we had yeah. about four or five. The Kenya, of course. Yes, uh, um, Grace Okocha, who everyone she's, 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 she's right the lady right of the moment, you know. Right now. <laughs> Seriously, and because yes. Lindsay, I'm really happy for Lindsay. She's going to be going for the World Junior. Yes, yeah. although she had qualified before, before now. She now. Had, yes. Okay, this so she was trying to meet the Olympic qualifying time. Okay. That was what she was really gunning for, you know, in the 400. Unfortunately, that did not happen. But for the World Juniors, yeah, she's already qualified. Already so she's perfect. just looking for the Olympic standard. Yeah, you were with some of these athletes. I mean, their performance and all that. Now, all these athletes, yes, I know they represent different states. Uh, what can, how much impact would they have in the state they're representing because of their performance? Oh, you know, oh I, I, I think, I think depending on the athlete, you know, like some states already, okay, like, Lagos. Yes, events that you just feel like, okay, this person <laughs> is the sure gold medalist, you know, for this. One athlete can, I mean, one gold medal goes a long way, right? Yeah. Like, even on the medals table, for example, even if you have more silvers yeah. and bronze, you know, the person who has gold, you know, is still um, ahead of you one way yeah. or the other, you know. So, for these athletes, definitely, Insa is the defending champion in the women's 400 meters yeah. for the National Sports Festival. Mm -hmm. You know, in 2018, she stunned everybody. Everyone. You know, she was like the youngest or smallest girl on that field, and she beats her older counterparts to win the sports festival. So, of course, she's the defending champion, you know, and she'll be going again, definitely, if she could do it two years ago, you know, yeah. nearly three years ago, of course, she would even feel that now, you know, she's in a better position. We've not seen Patience Okon compete yeah, this year. this year. So, um, I know she registered for the Grand Prix, but, you know, didn't make it eventually. But I, I would love to see what shape she is in, too, because she will also be gunning for... Uh, Olympic qualification. Yeah. You know, just like Jerry said when he was on it, this year the motivation is the Olympics. Yeah. We have the African Championships, we have the World Under 20 Championships, but the Olympics is the big thing. Of course. And of course, since um, athletes were denied that opportunity last year because of COVID, everyone is gone in for the Olympics this year. So I know Patience has gone in for Olympic standard, INSA is going. So everybody going for the festival, like, okay, want to meet the Olympic standard, you know. So that is what makes the difference, you know, in this festival we're having this year. So I know a lot of those athletes will be game changers for their states, you know. We have INSA for, um, I, I don't know what state she's going to be competing for. Yeah. I think last time yeah. it was a Bomb. Yeah. Yes, but that's so. where she's from, so why not just stay with her state? Oh, well, you know, that, that doesn't always happen <laughs> Putin, now, right? right? Yeah, so... <laughs> The, the state that has <laughs> the money, the, the highest <laughs> offer, you know, you, you go there. I, I yeah. you know for these athletes to sometimes, you know, you look at it from the point of view that this is their job, right? Mm -hmm. This is the career. Mm -hmm. Festival does not happen every year, yeah. right? It's once in two years. Yes. Yeah, in this case, it's been almost three years. And, you know, for the home base athletes especially, yeah. they don't really have a lot of opportunities, you know, to actually earn Money. For, yeah, for, and it's their career. Mm -hmm. It's the job they do. Mm -hmm. It's the only thing they do. Some of these people are not even in school, right? Yeah. It's just athletics. So the festival is the opportunity for them, you know, to, to make money, all the investment in. and everything <laughs> they put in, you know. So, so well, I, I know it's going to be very exciting this year. I'm looking forward to, yeah, the Edo, Edo Games. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, talking about rewards and all that, I mean, athletes are trying to get rewards. Now, we know that in Lagos State, I mean, the athletes, finally, the pledge that was made to them in 2018, they actually redeemed just yesterday. I mean, the <laughs> ones. <laughs> okay. Okay, I don't yes, want to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now, Lagos State government on Thursday actually redeemed this pledge, gifting the 2018 National Sports Festival athletes various cash rewards for what they did uh, for the state. Now, the event was held at Molade Koya Thomas Hall at the Teslin Balogun Stadium, Suriliri, Lagos. Athletes were rewarded those who won medals at the 2018 National Sports Festival in Abuja. So, athletes who won individual gold medal got about 300,000. Uh, those who won silver got 200,000. And those for bronze medals got 100,000. Now, for the team sport, the gold medalists got 750,000. Silver got 500, and of course, bronze medals got uh, 300,000. So the Lagos State Sports Commissioner for Youth and Sports, Social Development, Shagun Daudu said, commended them and hoping that, you know, they can actually keep the integrity and continue in this regard, especially looking forward to Edo 2020. Yes, their welfare, everything, they will have to ensure that these things will be done. So, now what they're saying is that they're also asking for funds, you know, from the government and all that to give them money. 2.5 million for each athlete, those who will be going to the Olympics and all that and everything. But you know what? I mean, 
you, you smile when I mention that. But let's just listen to, you know, let's get reaction from this event. Any promise we make, we will fulfill it. We don't make promises we can't make, we are fulfilled. And that is the essence of this. Because at the time we came in, the athletes came to us to let us know that promises were made to them by the previous administration that they will get a certain amount of money after they come back from Abuja National Sports Festival in 2018. And we promised them and we told them that yes, even though we didn't make that promise, but it's still Lagos State Government who made that promise. It would have been made by a governor, but that governor was representing the state government. And so we will make, we will fulfill that promise made by the previous administration. We encourage, we encourage development. We will focus on development because already we have people in this particular bunch of athletes who have been competing for the state for about 15, 16 years. We can't continue like that. So development is encouraged. However, also we recognize the, the position of where you have elite athletes. Like um, Anu, who is number one in Africa in badminton, we have number two in Africa too in badminton. So those kind, those kind of those boys are really playing in, in the national circuit. Nobody asks how they are going, they are going about it. So we continue encouraging, but we we focus more on development so that we keep churning out the fresh talent and developing them and make sure that they can compete for the country. That's our goal. Uh, this I can say is the biggest morale booster for all the athletes. Um, they perf they performed well at Abuja 2018, but getting the awards now just before going for Edo will really want them to even do better than what they've done. For even those that have gold medal, I want to set another record that will surpass what they've done before. So I would say this is a very big morale booster. We thought they are not going to give us this award, but it was really surprising. And this will encourage those ones that are going for the next festival. And people that are saying they are not going before, with this little amount of money, they will have the encouragement to go for the competition. So they will be inspired based on the money aspects. And it's not possible why an athlete train for like a month, like five months, and go for a competition that the person is not paid. It's really painful. But with this, the strength and the energy to do more will come into them. Welcome back, final lap. Yes, Yemi is still in the studio. Yemi, before we leave the studio, what are we expecting from Edo? Yes, they've been postponing. Yes, they were ready and all that. But later, I started talking about funds and everything. What should they do better than what Abuja did? You were in Abuja uh, 2018. Yeah, I was in Abuja. Yeah. And although I was mostly at the stadium, yeah, yeah you know, track on the track. Yeah, yeah <laughs> most, most, most mostly that, you know. And I, I hear that they, they, they have good facilities now. Like mm. They're really prepared for... The festival so you know i hear that there are a lot of facilities i've not been to edo state yet i haven't seen it so i'm waiting to go hopefully next week and then see what's really on ground you know but i, I think you know first of all like i'll just commend them for eventually making sure the festival happens you know so in terms of facilities i think there are good facilities on ground i know the track there is good because they had a test run yeah. just before we went on lockdown yeah. you know and, and athletes ran good times you know at the stadium there for the track event so i, I know i can talk about that you know so i think in terms of that that it, it's the facilities are okay so we should expect fast times then of course the extra motivation of the olympics everyone already ready for that as well so i think we should expect very good performances from the athletes and even in all the sports generally since athletes have been looking forward to this yeah. they've been starved of this competition for a long time so i believe everybody will be out there you know to put in their best so i think we should expect the best from them and it's your states. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the best from Edo State, definitely. <laughs> no, they will not disappoint. Trust. They won't disappoint. Yeah, I believe they will do that. Yeah, me own thank you so much for coming on the program. Thanks for having me. All right, we'll take a little time out. We'll be back after this. All right, let's talk about the CAF Confederations Cup right now. Aimba will be in action this weekend. They will be playing at home match day three of the CAF Confederations Cup. And they'll be up against ES Satif. And you have uh, Ahali Benghazi and Orlando Pirates will also be in action in that one. That's for the CAF Confederations Cup. Yes, Aimba, knowing that they won against Akada. Yeah, just one nil. Uh, to Moele. Yes, he will also be in action for them. He was the one who scored that goal. But they went to Orlando. They couldn't get a win. They lost a 2-1 uh, just when the game was about to be over. So right now, they're second on the log. 
in that particular uh, group. So these are the games to expect this weekend. And let's move over from there and quickly go to the Nigeria uh, League and PFL, the games for this weekend. Also, we know MFM will be hosting Ifai Yuba uh, in Lagos, Sunshine Stars and Aqua United. That game will be on Saturday. Well, let's see what Sunshine can bring in its party in this one, knowing that, well, the club a little bit of a problem, no payment of wages for like seven months now. Privatization is also on the card. And Aqua United, well, they've been on a very, very good form. We'll see what's going to happen in that game. Sunshine Stars, of course, will be playing in Lagos because of what happened at the stadium, the banishment and all that they're facing. Lobby Stars and Jigawa Golden Stars will also be in action. The card and Rivers United, Quara United, Table Toppers and Nassau United, another game to look forward to this weekend. Wicked Tourist and Casina United, another game. Canopillars and Worry Wolves will also be in action this weekend. And Heartland and Adamawa. Abia Warriors and Plateau United. Yes, remember what happened to Abia Warriors the last time? They lost 5-3 away from home. And we'll see how they can be able to well, beat high scoring. Yeah, these two sides know how to score goals. That's the good thing about these two sides, Abia Warriors and Plateau United. So we should expect another goal first. National League, of course, is next. We start with match day 11 fixtures in Group A1, where you have Aklosendi and Rarara will be in action. Gombe United and Oil Sport, Green Beret and Nav Rockets, Mighty Jets and EFCC, FC Taraba and Ekalemi Warriors, another game to look forward to. And move over to Group A2. Group A2, you have KB United and Shakarao Babes, Yobe Desert Stars and Malum Fashi, Zamfara United and DMD, Kogi United and Rose Safety, ABS and Niger Tornadoes. Now move over to the Southern Conference and starting with Group B1. Osho United and Giant Brillers, Go Round and Calabar Rovers, Stationary Stores and Ekiti United, uh, Shooting Stars and Vandreza. This is going to be a tough one. Shooting Stars lost their last game, finally, our first game of the season. Against Vandreza, we'll see if they can, you know, pick up from where they stop. Dynamite Force and Inewi United, Delta Force and Nilayo Sports will also be in action. And the final one where you have the Group B2. Also in the South, South Ibo Mute and Apex Screen, you have FC One Rocket and J Atete, Godoski and Crown, Biasi United and Joy Comment, Abia Comment and Vendor Insurance, Holy Arrows and Gateway United. And of course, moving over to England, uh, international breaks over, so the English Premier League is back. Chelsea and West Brom will be in action on Saturday. The other game for Saturday, you have Leeds United and Sheffield United. The game between Leicester City and Manchester City will also be on Saturday. And of course, Arsenal and Liverpool will be in action also for Southampton. And they will be hosting Burnley, Newcastle and Tottenham, Aston Villa and Fulham. Of course, Manchester United will be up against Brighton. Okay, before I leave the studio quickly, I'll just read some tweets, maybe two or three. Okay, let me quickly start with uh, Jonathan. Jonathan says, uh, De uh, Delta State will always win every sport festival because of their employment structure and cash award for winners. Being three-time gold medalist in karate events, I wish they will be able to make this festival free and fair so we get among, will be among the best. And a noble flyer man says, um, I want to appreciate for grazing. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for appreciation. Happy Good Friday to you too. HK says, I'm hoping for a successful festival. Uh, it's important to use this opportunity to develop the sports infrastructure across the country, which are in a sorry state, with a few exceptions. Of course, Rivers and Lagos are exempted from that one. Uh, Alpha Sports says uh, the spirit of confidence and unity I saw in Super Eagles camp would motivate them to qualify for the World Cup if sustained. I know Aimba will do well in the first half against the Algerian side, but the second half may be very, very tight. The usual way, that's what he says. Papers quickly. Uh, Sporting Sun. Sporting Sun, uh, that's one. Uh, into the, in the natural, into the named in Premier League team of the month. And Leicester, uh, the goal he scored, the three goals he scored for this month, have also been nominated for Leicester goal of the month. And Haaland's representative are in Barcelona for transfer talks. Okay, Sporting Life is next. And Sporting Life, you have Madison ready to return. That's the game between Man City. He may just be in action for Leicester City. What's going to happen to the position of Ian Acho and Jim Jimmy Vardy, where Ben Rogers has been pairing the two of them up front. We'll find out about that on Saturday. Eagles know their foes June 25th. That's 23 countries already qualified. We're still waiting for the game between Bene and uh, Sierra Leone because it was rescheduled due to COVID-19 outbreak in the camp of Bene. Last one is a uh, complete sport. Senior Mani and Chafo goes nominated for Leicester Goals of the Month. Let's see if he's going to get any one of them. I have to leave the studio now because Jimmy is just waiting in the wings. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cecilia Mogwe. Do have a great and fantastic, fantastic weekend.
Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cecilia Mogbe. Have a great weekend.